back. If you are just joining us, we are in part two of a discussion on aesthetics, exploring the essential question of what is beautiful and its impact on the lives of black people. When the news of a black charter school deemed the styles of our natural hair unacceptable, the public outrage was immediate, firing up social media and bringing righteous indignation to the school's board. Seemingly within hours, the hair controversy was resolved and the policy rescinded. According to the local newspaper, and I quote, an Oklahoma charter school board has rescinded a controversial no dreadlocks policy that also applied to other faddish styles of hair. This action follows the public outrage resulting in the Deborah Brown Community School Board's unanimous vote replacing the rule referencing hair with the general statement that administrators reserve the right to contact parents, guardians regarding any personal hygiene issues that it believes causes a risk to the health, safety, and welfare of the student, his or her classmates, and faculty or staff, or detracts from the education environment." End quote. Ironically, this particular school is located in Tulsa, Oklahoma, the historical location of the worst race massacre created by and committed by white supremacists in United States history. In 1921, armed white men completely demolished a once prosperous black town and murdered upwards of 300 citizens minding their own business. While this particular incident of hair discrimination happened in 2015, a number of incidents have been highlighted that include students being dismissed from school activities and not allowed to walk in graduation ceremonies. This type of hair discrimination affects boys and girls who wear natural hairstyles. To be clear, we have hair issues born of historical pain. Most black women of a certain age have hair raising stories that include the edges of their ears and backs of their necks burnt with the touch of a smoking hot straightening comb. The racist idea that our God given hair was not beautiful inspired Madam CJ Walker to invent hair products, glossine or hair grease, curling irons, and most famously the hot comb straightening iron. An entrepreneur extraordinaire Walker was once a maid, but would come home and make hair prayer products in her bathtub. Feeling that black women should have the right to feel that they too are beautiful. After creating the straightening comb, she taught her friends and neighbors how to use it and instructed them to knock on doors and demonstrate her new invention. In creating the first marketing strategy of door-to-door -door sales, Walker became the first fe female millionaire in the United States. A savvy business visionary, she created hair salons, beauty schools, manufacturing plants, and hired thousands of black people in positions from management to sales to instructors and everything in between. Madison C.J. Walker's economic triumph Nevertheless, was born of historical pain whose tentacles are still with us. Take the case of Laura Odiffin, a college graduate. In November 2015, she had a job offer rescinded due to her braids. Ms. Odiffin posted the email rejection on social media, but decided not to expose the company even as she consulted a lawyer. The email said, and I quote, Hi, Laura. Unfortunately, we cannot accept braids. It is simply a part of the uniform and grooming requirements we get from our clients. If you are unable to take them out, unfortunately, I will not be able to offer you any kind of work. Kind regards. 
Kind regards? Can you imagine having a prospective employer assess your ability to work in a professional capacity tied to your hair? Most unfortunate is the all too brief popular period of the 1960s when all manner of Afros accompanied by genuine pride was quickly co-opted as a fashion statement with an economic opportunity to produce Afro wigs in a variety of sizes and colors. Today, black women sporting natural hair are not considered the epitome of beauty by the dominant society, evidenced by the lack of that image in fashion magazines and on television and music videos. The vast majority of women of color who are in magazines even black publications have straight hair, hair that is chemically straightened and likely augmented by purchased hair, human or artificial. To add insult to injury, the billion dollar black hair care industry supplying everything from hair potions to wigs is dominated by non-blacks. The economics of hair care, that is black hair, have made others rich, leaving us impoverished culturally and financially, along with a gaping hole in our self-esteem. Chris Rock's thought-provoking film, Good Hair, released, released in 2009, should have been an eye-opener, inspiring changes in our attitudes and purchasing habits. While Rock's film didn't inspire any significant change, some progressive lawmakers decided to address this discriminatory practice. In the United States, legislators introduced the Crown Act in Congress in 2019. Crown stands for Create a Respectful and Open World for Natural Hair. The law is designed to protect black people against bias based on hair texture and cultural hairstyles, such as cornrows, twists, locks, braids, bantu knots, and afros. Having passed the House of Representatives in March 2022 and awaiting a vote in the Senate, the law would ban race-based hair discrimination in employment, federally assisted programs, housing, and public accommodations. Meanwhile, 18 state legislatures have passed laws inspired by the Crown Act and includes California, New York, Colorado, Washington State, Connecticut, and Tennessee, along with 42 U.S. cities. Justification for the legislation cites a 2019 study that found that black women's hair was, and I quote, three times more likely to be perceived as unprofessional. And 80% of black women feel they must change their natural hair to fit in at the office. Some of you know what I'm talking about. In England, a similar movement has been initiated by members of parliament who have asked the Equality and Human Rights Commission to add black textured hair to the list of protected characteristics to the country's Equality Act. The UK Equality Act protects various ethnic characteristics that are God-given and should not be a cause for discrimination. A UK study revealed that 93% of black people with African textured hair experienced microaggressions, including uninvited hair touching. Imagine that. Like in the US, black British school children and adults in the workplace have been discriminated against because of their hair, but the issue is global. In 2021, a black British swimming cap company, Soul Caps, had their Olympic Games application to supply swimming caps to black athletes in Tokyo, rejected by the International Swimming Federation. The rejection letter stated the caps, and I quote, 
didn't fit the natural form of the head, end quote. The question is, whose head? Mercy. While the discussion of hair, length, texture, and color has been part of the overall package of aesthetics, African characteristics in hair, as well as shade of skin color, have been the source of well-documented employment discrimination, disparities in income for the same position, and the lack of promotion, as well as incarceration statistics. But I digress. Your eccentric standards of beauty have long excluded people with tightly curled hair and ebony skin, ruining the self-image of many black children. It is well documented that the development of self-awareness and self-image begins at a very early age. Colorism or a negative color consciousness gives birth to self-doubt, a sense of inferiority and diminished self-esteem. Again, Dr. Woodson succinctly described how anti-black educational systems miseducate our people in a process that ultimately teaches blacks to despise themselves and simultaneously embrace manifestations of whiteness. Woodson pulls no punches. He says, we spend millions yearly to straighten our hair and bleach our skins. And some of us go so far as to have our noses lifted in hopes of looking like the white man. Monkeys too have straight hair and thin lips." End quote. Woodson did not exclude himself from his analysis. He said, I advocate a more realistic and practical approach in education. It took me over 30 years to get over my Harvard education. We'll be right back. Mm -hmm.